Guitar players, I got three questions for you. Number one, are you noticing a lack of dynamics in your live performance? Number two, are you really getting the most out of your digital platform, such as your Kemper, Helix, Axefx, Headrush? And number three, do you want to be the guitar player that stands out amongst all of the other performers that night and is the one that everybody remembers and talks about after the show's over? Well, in this video, not only am I going to address all three of these questions for you, I'm also going to give you some tips and audio demonstrations to back them up so that you can be the one that everybody talks about and remembers after the show's over and the lights go out. Let's get started. <laughs> We've all been to shows where we've performed with other bands and we've watched the other bands perform and probably noticed a few things about their performance. Sometimes there's a really good amount of dynamics going on and a great performance and sometimes it's very lackluster and the other guitar players are just up there with no effects and they're just kind of running dry and they're really not offering a lot of ear candy for the audience. And I'm not just talking about ear candy for the sake of having ear candy. I'm talking about dynamics. A lot of people think it's really up to the drummer to add all the dynamics to our music, especially in a live setting. That couldn't be further from the truth. And I'm going to prove it with a lot of concepts that I'm going to show you via audio clips that I use in my music in a live setting. Now here's a few big things that I always do when I perform live. Number one, I have my effects set up to not only be song specific, but I also have them set up so that they're specific to each part of the song. Now that probably sounds like I'm up there doing the river dance all night while I'm performing, but I'm not. It's actually pretty simple to do and you're not doing a whole lot of toe tapping. And to prove that, I actually have a camera filming my pedal board so that you can see that I'm actually not doing the river dance while I'm doing these demonstrations. Now a lot of us guitar players, when we perform live, we want to be the best player, the best shredder, someone that plays very aggressively or engages the crowd a lot. All of those things are really, really good things to keep in mind when you're doing a live performance. But something that I see a lot of guys leave out is how are you affecting the dynamics of the music when you are performing? Now with the use of some really good effects that are dialed in properly and well thought out, you can really have a big effect on the dynamics of each song or song part that you're performing live. And believe it or not, the audience does notice. They might not know what it is that you're doing to make the song more dynamic, but they do know that it's more dynamic and that's really all that matters. Now I'm definitely not the best guitar player everywhere we go and I'll guarantee you that. But what I try to do is try to be the most dynamic guitar player everywhere I go. I can guarantee you this, if you come to one of my shows, I'm constantly throwing different things out at the audience all the time. And it's fun to see the looks on their faces when you do that, because none of it's really expected. Even if it's a flanger or a phaser or a cool thing that you did with a wah really quick or like a stutter kind of uh, effect that you can use on your pedal board. I mean, there's tons of things that you can do that really set you apart from the other players. Because if you're the only one up there doing it, you're definitely going to stand out. Because let's face it, if you're on the bill with a bunch of other bands and there's a lot of really good guitar players on the bill as well, and it just becomes like this giant shred fest, I mean, that's cool. But after a while, to the average concert goer, they're not really going to tell the difference between you and the other guy, even if he is a little better than you. A shredder is a shredder. I mean, a guy that plays a billion notes per second is a guy that plays a billion notes per second. And after a while, it all sounds the same. And there's no way anybody really stands out. But... If you utilize these tools, not only are you going to get the most out of your digital platform, you're also going to give the audience more than just being another shredder. And you're going to stand out because you're going to be the most dynamic player up there. Because it's an all-encompassing thing. It's not just about the performance and how good of a player you are. It's also about how you enhance the songs with all of the effects that you carefully dialed in. And to be honest with you, it's kind of fun to do this because you get to be more creative than just playing something. You actually can color it with things that enhance your performance and enhance the parts of the song in ways that really connect you with the audience. And literally, you can see their faces light up when you do this. Because I do it all the time and I really enjoy seeing the looks on their faces when it happens. So let's get started with the first demonstration. I'm just going to give you a quick audio clip 
of me performing something with and without the enhancements that I dialed in for it. And then we'll briefly talk about it afterwards. Okay, so here's a quick isolated clip of what I dialed in for that part of the song. Okay, so basically what I had going on there was one effect, but it was kind of like a two-in-one effect because I had the stereo delay, which added a really nice spatial kind of experience, and it also had a mod on the delay. So what that was was like a chorusy, flangy kind of uh, thing going on with all of the repeats, and you can hear them wash, and they had a different kind of color to them each time. And what that did was just create a lot of space and a little more attitude to that part of the song. Now, I could have left it plain, which would have been fine, but once again, why not give people more to listen to? I mean, can you imagine being in the room when that's going on and you can hear it bouncing between both speakers as an audience member? And on top of that, you got that washy kind of sound going over it. I mean, that's not something that you hear every day, and it makes that part more interesting, and it sounds bigger. Okay, so let's go on to the next example. Okay, so what you heard there was the air chorus combined with stereo delay. So I had this really nice washy twist to my guitar tone mixed with a nice spatial delay that gave me size and space, which made that whole part a little more interesting. Now this might be kind of a subtle effect, but sometimes it's the little things that make the biggest difference in some of the parts of the songs that we're playing. Okay, so let's go on to the next example. Okay, so what you heard there was some stereo delay again with uh, an occasional use of a flanger and the wah. What's cool about using things sparingly is that when you do use them, it really stands out big time. I mean, let's face it, if you have it on the whole time, it doesn't stand out anymore, does it? 
Once again, like I said before, it's the little things that make a big difference in some of the song parts. Now the next thing I want to show you is a combination of how I use the piezo pickups on my Majesty guitars along with my digital platform, which in this instance is my Kemper. What's really cool about using these digital platforms is that at the touch of a button, you can bypass the amp and the cab sim, which never sound good with piezo pickups, but just use a compressor, some chorus, delay, and reverb, and it sounds really cool. Check out these demonstrations here. Now you have to admit that's a pretty cool and unique sound and it's not something that an audience is used to hearing every time they go to a concert. Now based on personal experience I can tell you this, whenever I play anything with the piezo pickup on stage I always get compliments after the show. Even from other bands people will come on and be like what was that that you used? That sounded really good and it was so beautiful I've never heard anything like that before and I tell them and they all say the same thing. I gotta get one of those because that sounds incredible. It's literally something that you can give an audience that they've probably never heard before and it's something that they'll remember you by. Now I can literally play tons of shreddy type solos and all kinds of cool riffs on stage, but I'll guarantee you this, people will remember the piezo stuff that I do more than they remember anything else. It happens at every show and I can tell you that as a personal testament. Okay, so I've shown you a lot of individual clips, but let's take a longer clip and see how all of these things are utilized and see how the dynamics change throughout this longer clip. Check it out.
Wow, there was a lot going on there. Lots of really cool effects and different unique sounds and a ton of dynamics. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Offering the audience more than what they're used to getting. And it's going to make you stand out big time amongst all of the other players there. Even if they're better than you, they still didn't offer the audience what you just did. And like I said, sometimes it's just the subtle things and sometimes it's really big bombastic things. That's why they're called dynamics. You're going to do some little things and some big things and really offer the audience tons of variation for them to listen to. Lots of ear candy as well. And I can't say it enough. It really does make not only you stand out, but more importantly, it makes your music stand out. You're going to be that band that has a lot of dynamics and a lot of really cool sounds and various things for people to listen to, as opposed to really good guitar tone, which is always appreciated. But there's more than just going on stage and giving somebody really good guitar tone. I suggest that you give them more than that. Give them lots of ear candy and dynamics, and it really makes a big difference in your performance. Now we're almost done, but I still have a couple more examples to show you. These are very important as well. Not only are these concepts that I'm utilizing here enhancing the dynamics of the song, but they're also enhancing the mood. Check it out. Well, that was pretty obvious, wasn't it? I mean, it was an eerie part of the song. And the most eerie kind of effect you can put on a guitar, in my opinion, is reverse delay. It gives it that kind of creepy, smoky, eerie feeling, and I love it. And I utilize it anytime I'm doing something that's supposed to sound a little creepy or eerie. I mean, you heard the second part when I pulled the effect out. You heard how it kind of just killed the part, and it just didn't sound as eerie or exciting or anything. You know, so, I mean, just keep in mind, like, what the mood of the song is, and then dial in effects that actually enhance that. It really does make a big difference, like you just heard. Okay, so let's go on to the next example. Okay, so this one was pretty simple and straightforward. What I used here was stereo delay to make the chorus of this song sound bigger. Now a lot of times I've seen guitar players make the mistake of just turning their volume up on the chorus to make it sound bigger. All you're doing is just being louder and you're killing the vocalist. What you want to do to add size to a part of a song is just to add some really good stereo delay to it and it's going to sound a lot bigger, like what you just heard. Now the setting that I had on the delay was pretty subtle. I probably could have amped it up more and made it sound even bigger, but I think you get the point in this demonstration. So once again, instead of turning up your volume on a chorus, just add some delay just for the chorus and make it sound bigger. Now the reason why I say turn the delay on just for the chorus in this instance is because if you have delay on through the whole song, no one's going to tell the difference between when you're going big or tightening things up. So what you want to do is utilize that delay for certain parts of the song, such as the chorus, to make it sound bigger than the part that was played just before that. Another thing that you can do is also add chorus to your tone, and that actually gives you a little more width and dimension as well. I did not utilize that for this part because I just wanted to show you what the delay can do all by itself. 
Now let's check out the next clip. Okay, so there is a couple things going on there. When I'm playing single note lines, I try to keep it tight so there's no effects on anything typically. But what was cool was as soon as the song went to that next riff, what I did is I opened it up with some delay and made it sound bigger. But when the vocalist started singing, you'll notice that I turned the delay off and narrowed my sound so that the focus would be on her, not me. So I made the parts big where they needed to be uh, when I was playing kind of like by myself, but as soon as she started singing, I kind of backed up a little bit without taking my volume down. What I did is I just made myself a little smaller so that she could have the focus on her. But halfway through the first verse, you'll notice just to kind of create a little more energy, I turned the delay back on and created a little more space for myself and made a bigger statement without interrupting the vocalist because as you could see, she was amping up there as well. So I kind of took a step up with her. The other thing that you'll notice is another one of those subtle things where I used the flanger on that one riff and it just added a little more ear candy uh, to the song. Okay, so here's the last example that I'm going to give you. I'll give you my uh, thoughts about that after you listen to it, and then we'll go ahead and end the video. Okay, so there's a couple things I want to say about this. Number one, I dialed in the effects that would enhance the mood of this part of the song. This part of the song sounds kind of majestic and beautiful, and I wanted to dial in effects that would match that and actually add to that. Now remember, earlier I had effects dialed in for an eerie part of a song. Well, believe it or not, this is the same song. So I have two different clean sounds dialed in for this song, depending on the mood that I wanted to invoke. And with these digital platforms, you can do that. You can have several different types of clean sounds and distorted sounds dialed in to fit the sound that you want to create for that particular part of the song. So what I definitely encourage you to do is get really creative with your sounds and really enjoy dialing in different effects to enhance the parts of the songs that you're playing. Don't just think about, oh, I just need these few effects to get through a show. Think about the song and the parts of the song and what is happening there and match it with whatever kind of dynamics or mood that would be appropriate for that part. 
And I'll tell you something, your music is going to stand out more than everybody else's. And on a selfish note, as a guitar player, you're going to stand out amongst all the other guitar players that you perform with that night. I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it useful. Please give me a like and a share. And if you haven't subscribed, please do, because I got a lot of great stuff coming up. And I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you.